Hello, dear ones. Tonight, we invite you to relax and settle down for a comforting tale that promises to ease your mind and soothe your soul. Picture yourselves in a cozy sanctuary, where every word we share gently lulls you into a state of deep relaxation. As the serene sounds of nature play in the background, let go of all worries and prepare for a night of restful sleep. So, let the tale begin. Princess Mira and the Magic Talisman Chapter 1 The Dire Prophecy In the verdant kingdom of Greenwood, where ancient trees whispered age-old secrets to the meandering rivers, Princess Mira lived a life filled with both the pleasures and responsibilities of royalty. Known for her sharp mind and adventurous spirit, Mira was beloved by all in the kingdom. However, beyond the serene beauty of Greenwood, dark clouds were gathering, foretelling a storm that might wash away their peace. One stormy night, King Eldrick, Mira's father, was disturbed by a vivid and terrifying dream. In his dream, a monstrous dragon with scales as dark as obsidian and eyes like molten lava laid waste to Greenwood, its fiery breath turning lush greenery into ash. The dream was no mere figment of the night. It was a prophecy, a dire warning delivered by an ancient oracle who appeared as a shadowy figure beside the dragon. The oracle spoke of a magic talisman hidden deep within the dark mountain, a relic powerful enough to control or vanquish the beast. The following morning, with heavy clouds still masking the dawn, King Eldrick summoned Princess Mira to the Grand Hall. Underneath the high arched ceilings, with solemn tapestries bearing the history of their land as a backdrop, King Eldrick recounted his ominous vision. The court's advisers, a group of wise men and women, confirmed the prophecy's significance. They knew of the magic talisman, an artifact of immense power lost to legend and guarded by enigmas and peril. Princess Mira, ever brave and resolute, immediately volunteered to retrieve the talisman. Her decision was met with cheers of support, but also whispers of worry, for all knew the peril that awaited her beyond the safety of Greenwood's borders. Before her departure, the kingdom's wise woman and elder elf named Arina presented Mira with a map to the Dark Mountain. The map was old, its edges frayed and its lines faded, but its paths were clear enough to guide her through the dangers that lay ahead. Equipped with her father's sword, a blade forged from the rarest metals and enchanted by the kingdom's most powerful sorcerers, and a shield emblazoned with the crest of Greenwood, Mira set out on her journey. Her first steps took her through the castle's ancient gates and into the Whispering Woods, a vast forest that bordered the kingdom. The Whispering Woods were said to be alive, with each tree and vine holding the essence of nature's spirit. As Mira ventured deeper, the trees seemed to lean closer, their leaves rustling with the wind's secrets. The path was dappled with sunlight that filtered through the dense canopy, casting patterns that danced upon the ground. Her journey through the woods was a test of her resolve, as the path twisted unexpectedly, often leading back on itself or diverging into multiple forks. 
Mira's keen sense of direction and the subtle guidance of the woodland creatures, who seemed to recognize her noble purpose, kept her on the right path. The animals of the forest, from the smallest squirrel to the majestic stags, appeared unafraid, often pausing to watch her pass with curious, intelligent eyes. As evening approached, Mira reached the edge of the whispering woods, where the trees gradually gave way to the open fields of lavender bluffs. Here the land stretched wide, and the sky opened above her. The fields were a sea of purple and blue, swaying gently in the breeze, their soothing scent filling the air and lending a moment of peace to Mira's anxious heart. Yet even this beautiful sight was marred by signs of the coming danger. The edges of the fields were scorched, a clear indication that the dragon was nearing, its path marked by destruction. With a renewed sense of urgency, Mira crossed the lavender bluffs, each step taking her closer to the looming silhouette of the dark mountain. The mountain stood on the horizon, its peaks shrouded in mist and mystery. It was here that the magic talisman awaited, hidden in its shadowy depths. As the sun set behind her, casting long shadows ahead, Mira felt the weight of her kingdom's hopes resting on her shoulders. But with the resolve that had defined her since childhood, she pressed forward, her heart set on saving her people and proving that even in the face of dire prophecies, courage and wit could light the darkness. The night fell as Mira made camp at the foot of the dark mountain, the chilling howls of distant creatures reminding her that the true test of her bravery was just beginning. Chapter 2 Allies of the Air and Earth Princess Mira's journey led her from the serene lavender bluffs into the rugged terrain surrounding the base of Dark Mountain. The landscape transformed dramatically as she progressed, the gentle fields gave way to rocky paths and dense underbrush, hinting at the challenges that lay ahead in her quest for the magic talisman. As she navigated through a particularly dense thicket, Mira heard the sharp cry of an eagle overhead. Looking up, she spotted a majestic bird circling high above its feathers glinting like silver against the sun. This was no ordinary eagle. It was Aaron, a legendary talking eagle rumored to possess ancient knowledge and the ability to perceive truths hidden to others. Recognizing an ally in her mission, Mira called out to the eagle, her voice clear and commanding. Aaron descended gracefully, landing on a nearby outcrop. His eyes, sharp and discerning, regarded Mira with a mix of curiosity and respect. Princess Mira, he greeted, his voice as regal as his bearing. I have watched your progress from the skies. You pursue a quest of great peril. Mira explained her mission, and without hesitation, Aaron pledged his support. The path ahead is fraught with dangers that eyes on the ground cannot foresee. Allow me to guide you from above. Grateful for the eagle's aerial perspective, Mira continued her ascent. Now with Aaron circling overhead, scouting the path and alerting her to obstacles. His keen eyesight proved invaluable guiding Mira around natural barriers and hidden threats. As the day waned, 
Mira and Aaron reached the Valley of Whims, a mystical place known for its playful spirits and mischievous magic. Here the landscape was alive with enchantment, flowers that hummed with luminescence and trees that whispered secrets of the ancient earth. It was in this magical vale that Mira encountered Lyric, a spirited sprite known for his jests and riddles. Lyric emerged from a bloom of sparkling flowers, his tiny form radiating a playful energy. "'Ah, a traveller in my domain!' he exclaimed, his voice tinkling like chimes. "'What brings a princess so far from her castle?' Mira shared her quest with Lyric, who was instantly captivated by the adventure and the nobility of her cause. Oh, what fun, what danger! I shall join you, Princess, for every quest needs a touch of whimsy, and perhaps a sprinkle of my magic. With Aaron in the skies and Lyric flitting around her, Mira felt a surge of confidence. Her journey continued through the Valley of Whims, where each step brought forth new wonders and challenges. Lyric's magic helped them navigate the shifting terrain, where paths changed with the mood of the valley. His laughter and light-heartedness brought a sense of ease to the journey, balancing the tension of their perilous mission. The trio's synergy grew as they approached the outer reaches of the valley, which bordered the foothills of Dark Mountain. Here the playful magic of the valley gave way to the brooding presence of the mountain. The terrain became steeper, the paths more treacherous. Aaron's guidance was crucial, as he alerted Mira to loose stones and precarious ledges, while Lyric's enchantments helped stabilize the ground beneath their feet or create momentary bridges over gaps in the earth. As night approached, they made camp under the shelter of an ancient gnarled tree that Lyric assured was friendly and willing to watch over them as they rested. Around the campfire, Aaron shared tales of the skies, of the clouds and stars he had soared among, providing Mira with a broader perspective of her kingdom and the world beyond. Meanwhile, Lyric conjured orbs of light that danced around the camp, casting playful shadows and keeping the darkness at bay. That night, as Mira lay under the starlit sky, she reflected on the unexpected friendship she had formed. Aaron and Lyric, creatures of air and earth, had come to her aid, not out of duty but from a shared sense of adventure and innate goodness. The path to the magic talisman was daunting, filled with unknown dangers, but with her allies by her side, Mira felt prepared to face whatever challenges Dark Mountain held. Dawn broke with a chorus of birdsong, and Lyric's mischievous giggles as he played pranks on unsuspecting morning creatures. After a quick meal, the trio set out again, their spirits high despite the looming shadow of Dark Mountain that dominated the horizon. Each step took them closer to their goal, and with each step, the bonds of their fellowship strengthened, forged in the fires of shared trials and the laughter that echoed even through the darkest woods. Chapter 3 The Water Fairy's Test Princess Mira, alongside her companions Aaron the Eagle and Lyric the Sprite, reached the serene shores of Lake Lumin, known across the land for its crystalline waters that sparkled under the sun with a thousand different hues. Legend had it that the lake was home to the Water Fairy, 
a guardian of the aquatic realm and keeper of the magical seeds that could aid Mira in her quest to reach and ascend the dark mountain. The trio approached the edge of the lake, where the water met the soft, sandy shore. Here the air was filled with a cool mist that rose gently from the lake's surface, carrying with it the subtle scent of water lilies and fresh rain. As they stood by the water's edge, the surface of the lake began to ripple, and from these gentle waves emerged the water fairy. She appeared ethereal, with flowing robes that seemed woven from the very essence of the lake, her hair cascading around her like a waterfall. Welcome, Princess Mira, the water fairy greeted, her voice as clear and melodious as the lake itself. I am aware of your courageous journey and the noble cause that propels you. However, to gain the magical seeds you seek, you must first prove your worth through a trial of wisdom and purity. Mira nodded, prepared to accept any challenge that would bring her closer to saving her kingdom. The water fairy's test was simple yet daunting. Mira was to retrieve a sacred pearl from the deepest part of Lake Lumine, guarded not by brute strength, but by cunning elemental spirits of the water. Taking a deep breath, Mira stepped into the cool waters of the lake, feeling the liquid energy surround her, seeping a calm yet potent magic into her being. Aaron circled above, keeping a vigilant watch, while Lyric hovered near, casting small spells to warm Mira's path through the colder currents. As Mira swam deeper, the light from the surface began to fade, plunging her into a world of muted blues and greens. Here in the watery depths, she encountered the spirits the fairy had spoken of. These spirits, manifestations of the lake's essence, swirled around her, their forms both beautiful and menacing. They spoke in riddles and puzzles, each question a test of Mira's wisdom and understanding of the natural world. The heart that beats beneath the waves, what form does it take? One spirit whispered, its voice echoing through the water. Remembering the tales of her childhood, Mira responded with confidence, The heart of the lake is the life it sustains, from the smallest fish to the greatest whale. Pleased with her answer, the spirits allowed her to swim further, guiding her through underwater currents that hastened her journey. As she approached the lake's heart, a cavern lit by bioluminescent algae, she finally saw the pearl. It lay upon a pedestal of coral glowing softly amidst the dark water. Guarding it was the final spirit, larger and more imposing than the others, its form fluid and ever-changing. To take the pearl you must answer this. What is stronger, the gentle flow of the river or the fierce rush of the waterfall? The spirit challenged, its eyes piercing through the dim light. Mira thought of her kingdom, of the rivers that fed the land and the waterfalls that inspired awe. Both are strong in their own way, she replied. The river's strength lies in its persistence carving paths through stone, while the waterfall's power is in its immediacy and awe. True strength adapts and endures much like the water itself. The spirit regarded her for a moment, its form shimmering with approval. Wise and true, it said, moving aside. The pearl is yours, princess. 
With a grateful heart, Mira took the pearl, feeling its energy pulse like a heartbeat within her palm. As she made her way back to the surface, the spirits of the lake whispered around her, their voices a chorus of ancient melodies. Upon reaching the shore, the water fairy awaited, a knowing smile playing upon her lips. You have succeeded in your trial, Princess Mira. You have shown wisdom and respect for the balance of nature, she declared, presenting Mira with a pouch of magical seeds. These seeds will aid you on your journey, growing into whatever you need, shelter, food, or protection. Thanking the water fairy for her blessings and guidance, Mira, Aaron, and Lyric prepared to leave the tranquil shores of Lake Lumin. With the sacred pearl and magical seeds in her possession, Mira felt a renewed sense of hope and determination. The trials ahead on Dark Mountain loomed large, but with her wisdom, courage, and the support of her newfound allies, she felt ready to face whatever challenges awaited. As the trio set off from the lake, the water fairy's final words echoed in Mira's ears. Remember, true power lies not in conquering, but in understanding. With this newfound knowledge, Mira continued her journey, her heart and steps light, knowing that each challenge would bring her closer, not only to her goal, but also to a deeper understanding of herself and the world around her. Chapter 4 The True Talisman The journey to the peak of Dark Mountain was fraught with peril. As Princess Mira and her companions, Aaron the Eagle and Lyric the Sprite climbed the steep slopes, the mountain seemed to sense their presence, its ancient magic awakening to challenge the intruders. The path became increasingly treacherous, with jagged rocks, sudden fissures, and deceptive paths that led to dizzying cliffs. The air grew thinner and colder as they ascended, and the sky darkened with ominous clouds that swirled around the peak, as if guarding the secrets of the mountain. Mira's resolve, however, remained unshaken. With each step, she drew upon the wisdom and strength she had garnered from her previous trials, and her companions provided unwavering support, guiding her through the mountain's mystical barriers. As they approached the summit, the true guardian of the talisman revealed itself a colossal dragon, its scales shimmering with an ethereal glow, and its eyes burning with a fierce ancient intelligence. The dragon did not attack, but instead watched Mira with a scrutinizing gaze, as if measuring the worth of her spirit. Mighty dragon, Mira called out, her voice steady despite the howling winds. I have come to claim the magic talisman, not for power, but to protect my kingdom and its people from destruction. The dragon's response came as a deep rumble that echoed through the mountain. Many have sought the talisman for glory and greed, little elf. What makes you different? Mira stepped forward her courage palpable. I seek the talisman to prevent a prophecy of destruction. I come not for conquest, but for preservation, guided by respect for all beings and the balance of nature. The dragon regarded Mira for a long moment, its ancient gaze piercing into her soul, then, in a voice that resonated with the wisdom of ages, it spoke, Your journey has been one of truth and humility, princess, but before I grant you the talisman, 
you must understand its true nature. The dragon pointed to a glistening pool by the peak, with a tremendous tail flick. Mira saw not only her reflection in the water, but also images of her kingdom, its former wealth, its present emptiness, and its future harmony restored. The dragon went on, The talisman is a concentration of the old magic that ties this mountain together. It is not an object. It is a force. It requires a deep emotional bond for you to wield it. Summoning all her inner strength and purity of intent, Mira reached into the pool. As her fingers touched the water, a surge of power flowed through her, a connection forming between her heart and the essence of the mountain. The water glowed brightly, and when she withdrew her hand she held not a physical talisman, but a radiant orb of light that pulsed in sync with her heartbeat. How you have done well, Princess Mira, said the dragon, a note of approval in its voice. With this power you hold the ability to summon the rain and quell the flames. Use it wisely, for its strength is bound to your own life force. Grateful and humbled by the dragon's trust, Mira bowed deeply. Thank you, wise guardian. I vow to use this gift for the good of all, to protect and nurture, not to dominate. As Mira and her companions made their descent from Dark Mountain, the clouds that had shrouded the peak began to disperse, and for the first time in months rays of sunlight pierced through casting golden light across Greenwood. The journey back to the kingdom was filled with a new sense of hope and purpose. Upon her return, Mira's transformation was celebrated by all. The kingdom rejoiced not only in their salvation from the prophesied destruction, but also in the birth of a new era of wisdom and balance between humanity and the magical forces of nature. Mira's story spread far and wide, a tale of a princess who faced the darkness not with weapons, but with wisdom and a pure heart. Under Mira's rule, Greenwood flourished like never before. The rains returned to nourish the land, the rivers flowed full and clear, and the people thrived in harmony with the natural world. The dragon, too, remained a protector of the realm, occasionally seen soaring high above the kingdom, a reminder of the ancient magic that watched over them. Mira's legacy was one of enlightenment and unity, a testament to the power of understanding and respect for all life. Her reign was marked by peace and prosperity, and she was forever known as Mira the Wise, the princess who conquered not with the might of arms, but with the strength of her spirit and the purity of her heart.